Welcome back, everybody. They are huge, spontaneous car parties fueled by social media, and they often shut down not just major freeways, but intersections on surface streets as well. And cops have their hands full trying to put the brakes on what are called street takeovers. Bob DeCastro has an up-close view. They materialize in a matter of minutes. Go ahead, baby. Masses of car enthusiasts showing off and burning rubber. <laughs> They're called takeovers because these drivers are doing just that. Inviting one another on social media to take over or shut down major intersections and freeways for one big car party. Last November, gridlock on the 110 freeway near downtown LA just so some could do donuts. Last December, the 105 freeway brought to a standstill 18 people arrested for drugs, illegal weapons, and stolen cars. Why is this happening? Ted Mosier is part of the L.A. car culture scene. He's built dozens of cars for movies, including Too Fast, Too Furious. Kids are going to do this. Adults are going to do it because that's what they like to do. It's, it's a sport to them, just like any other sport, skiing, football, basketball, tennis. An extreme sport to them, but it's also extremely dangerous. <laughs> Fox 11's investigative team showed up to takeovers over the past several months, springing up all over the Southland. We found people hanging out of cars as they hurried to get to the event. Cars racing against oncoming traffic. On social media, we found video of a driver ejected from his car. Here, a fight breaks out. And while we were recording this takeover, bullets began to fly. Law enforcement has created a task force to crack down on this. It's lawlessness. It's they feel that they could do whatever they want uh, to disturb our neighborhoods and, and our people, people that are driving, and that that's not okay with this. That's breaking the law. It's hard for the police to police it. They're, it's a riot situation. They're going to have to get the National Guard out because there's too many people. The, the people outnumber the police probably 10 to 1 or more. So how is a policeman supposed to do this without using any violence? When police do show up to break up the illegal activity, they're often met with hostile crowds. Watch as spectators surround this police cruiser to stop officers trying to pursue a car. In another incident, a deputy draws his gun and demands that everyone get out of the car. The driver just speeds off. It's never going to go away, so you might as well embrace it and uh, figure out a way to make it safer. We went to the councilman's office this morning. There is a growing group of people who believe one of the solutions is to build a legal sanctioned takeover spot. They realize getting city or county approval is an uphill battle. I can't guarantee you that it'll stop, but I can guarantee you that it would be a lot less frequent and it would be a lot safer. It would be a lot more accessible to a lot more people. We really don't have a say in that, but if it affects our neighborhoods in a positive way, then that's, that, that would be a good thing. For years, street racers have said that the best way to get off the streets is to give them a safe, secure place to race. So joining us, you just caught a glimpse of them in uh, Bob's piece, is Donald Galas from the International Brotherhood of Street Racers. That was, a, that was quite a piece from Bob. Did we, did we give you a fair shake in that, or did we make you look worse than you are? Well, one of the things that i just like to touch on is that uh, the takeover styles are part of the tentacles of the car culture world that we see here in Los Angeles. So we're not discounting them as a different uh, type of uh, group or organization. Uh, we are also welcoming them, you know, within our organization. So you have your takeovers and you have your street racers. Which so you're saying you're saying you're not lobbying for these guys. You're not you're not defending them. Well, the, the type of facility that we're seeking, we would want enough area for uh, the takeover uh, fellas to be involved with too, because we want to provide a safe venue for them also to come and have their activities under safe, controlled environment too. All right, tell tell us more about what you're seeking. Are you seeking to reopen Terminal Island, which was open and closed and open and closed for since the 1970s? Right. Um, that's what we're trying to do right now. We're trying to bring back the Terminal Island Raceway right now. 
Uh, we know that in the past when the Terminal Island Raceway was open, that a number of street racing uh, related uh, fatalities and chases and stuff like that, the numbers went down and everybody was at the track when the track was open. Well, Donald, a lot of people out there who at least have driven past Fontana would say, why not go to the Speedway in Fontana? You can pay your 10 bucks and race there. Well, you know what, for a person like myself, and I'm just speaking from my point of view, I don't own a trailer and I don't own a truck. The car that I've built uh, at my garage in San Pedro with help from a bunch of youngsters that come to my place is uh, for me to drive it to the fr you know, on the freeway and get it to Fontana, I risk breaking parts or even if I'm at the track, I can break there. Well, but for, but for somebody who lives in Pasadena or, or East LA, they got to drive all the way down to Terminal Island. Well, the East LA uh, one would probably be more you know, accessible to them. They can get on the freeway and come down you know, to the, to the harbor area. Another thing that I'm looking at or that our organization has been talking about, mm -hmm. we're talking about local economic impact that's intertwined with this also. Now, the, uh, the people down at the port and uh, people with the city have said, you're just not gonna get this, at least that's some of the uh, coverage I've read, that there's just too many plans for that area and you're, you're just kind of barking up the wrong tree. Well, that's what they keep telling us, but as of this morning, we did have a meeting uh, with uh, one of the directors of the port, Mr. Don Lu, mm -hmm. and we showed him a uh, drawing, a schematic, if you would, of the, of the portion of property that we would like to occupy, and we would only be taking over about 10% of it. The remaining 90% uh, of the property can be used for cargo storage and containers and stuff like that, from which the port has been uh, seeking to uh, you know, get get the ships out of the port and and put you know unload the containers. Okay, all right, Donald Galas, thank you very much. Don't go away. We're going to bring Councilman Englander back in when we come back.